Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to talk about whether or not it's a good idea to upgrade from El Capitan to Sierra and eventually to High Sierra, which is sort of an interim step before the next major upgrade of Mac OS comes out. We're going to take a look at the features and I'm going to talk about whether or not I will upgrade my Mac 2015. So I have a MacBook Pro 2015. Before we get started, I wanted to thank Keith Haynes for becoming a Silver Level subscriber on Patreon. I really appreciate the support as always and if you would like to become a patron on my Patreon set your browser to patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets and consider donating maybe a dollar for buying me a cup of coffee which is always very appreciated. Hopefully I can get up to about $200 a month that's my interim goal anyway to help support the couple hundred dollars a month that I make on YouTube with advertising. All right, let's get into it. So my concern, considering the system that I'm running, I'm gonna have a look here if I go to about this Mac. I've got the MacBook Pro Retina 13 inch early 2015 model and the processor is a 2.7 gigahertz Intel Core i5 with 8 gigs of memory and I have a 256 gigabyte SSD and right now I'm running El Capitan version 10.11.6 now of course if I go and check out software updates I've got an offer here to upgrade to Mac OS Sierra which is something I'm considering but I'm going to look at the different features and the ones that I think are worth upgrading for and the ones that don't really interest me but may interest you as a Mac user. Now of course there are, there's always minor updates that are available and you should keep an eye on this if you're a Mac user and watch out for those security updates and I'm going to do this update right after I get done shooting this video because there is some malware out there that is very concerning for a Mac and you're definitely going to want to get that security update. If you're on Mavericks you're not going to see this security update and I'm pretty sure we're getting to the point where if you're on Yosemite you also more than likely will not see this security update. It's hard to say at this point. Unfortunately with Mac OS Sierra my 2009 MacBook Pro will no longer be supported so I'm gonna have to go with whatever support I can get with El Capitan. Now I've done a little bit of research the funny thing is about Apple is they they don't have an official policy per se but they typically support the two previous versions of the operating system so some are speculating here that Yosemite security updates probably are going to end in fall of 2017 and El Capitan security updates will end sometime in fall of 2018 with the next major release of Mac OS. If we go over to Macworld there is a page about Mac OS Sierra versus Mac OS X El Capitan. Now overall as far as the interface goes you're not going to see too many big changes and Sierra of course is a free upgrade to El Capitan so that flattened look that we've gotten used to is going to be continued so that's not going to change too awful much but Many of the applications do get updates, one of which is tabbed browsing in more than just the browser. Apparently in many of the main apps and some third-party apps are going to be changed to include tabbed browsing. Some of the major new features, and I don't know how you feel about these, is Siri on the Mac. Now this is one personally I don't care for. I usually don't use any of the assistants. Now some of you may really like that if you're used to using Siri on your iPhone and I don't own an iPhone so for me I don't use it every once in a while I use the Google assistant but very rarely so Siri on the Mac is not a big deal for me however it may be for you now you do not have to actually use Siri if you upgrade to Mac OS Sierra so if you decide 
you don't want to use it. You do not need to. Another big feature that's coming up is Apple Pay on the Mac. Well, I shouldn't say coming up. You can upgrade now to Sierra. So uh, if this is something that's important to you, uh, you may want to jump on board, especially if you're in the Mac ecosystem. Again, I'm not, so this is a for me a non-starter. It's not a feature I'm interested in. Again, here we have Auto Unlock your Mac with your Apple Watch. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I'm using the Samsung Galaxy S3 Frontier phone. So again, this isn't a huge feature. Security-wise, I do not like the idea of Auto Unlock, and I never use the fingerprint scanner on my phones. And the reason why is if you're in a situation, a legal situation, you can be compelled, according to case law, to provide your finger and have it scan your phone or your device to unlock it. And presumably, you know, if your watch is near your device, it could be unlocked and uh, your information can be gone through. And this is a warrantless thing, as far as I know. So that's very concerning for me. So I always use a passcode because courts have upheld that you can't be compelled to give your passcode for a device because that would be self-incriminatory. So take it for what you will. Most of us say, hey, I'm not doing anything illegal, so I don't have to worry about it. And I, I definitely understand that. Uh, I'm just from the position of I would rather not provide any information whatsoever whether or not I'm innocent in the event that uh, my electronics fall in the hands of the police for whatever reason. That's just me. But anyway, this is not a feature that I'm too awful interested in. Now this one I am, Universal Clipboard. This is a feature that I definitely could make use of. I'd like to be able to cut and paste things across devices uh, there are times when I pull up my MacBook 2009 and I think, oh, I was working on my MacBook 2015. If only I had that particular option here. A lot of time what I do is I use notes and I have them saved in iCloud so that with my notes here, I find that I can then grab that text at least, but it would be really interesting to have the clipboard to be able to go back and forth between devices. I think that's pretty neat. Syncing your desktop and documents across all Macs, I really feel like this is only useful if you have purchased more iCloud share space. Now I've got the default which is four gigabytes. It's not really that awful helpful for me. So uh, I think this is a great feature again if you're in the ecosystem and you have significant amounts of share space. I believe in High Sierra iCloud has moved up to four terabytes of share space so maximum. So you can purchase up to four terabytes of share space. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. This is definitely a big feature for me. Optimized storage, the ability to actually clean up the storage on your disk. When I look at mine, so if I go back into about this Mac and we check out storage, I right now have 73 gigabytes free. Now I do have a massive Windows 10 virtual machine that's sitting at 60 gigabytes. It's absolutely huge. I probably could delete that, but it's my test virtual machine, so I use it to get the latest builds of Windows 10, so I may have to move that off onto a portable drive, which probably would make sense because I'd free up a ton of space, but if I edit one video, depending on how much video I'm importing in, I can easily fill up this space in iMovie or Final Cut Pro. So. This is not, it looks like it's a decent amount of room, but it really is. And I've filled it up within minutes of beginning to edit a movie, and it's very frustrating. So it would be nice to be able to do a cleanup. I'm not sure what's in other here, but, you know, if I could free up some of the space, that would be awesome. So the optimized storage feature, it does sound like it's something that's going to be useful. There's other features. Now, these ones I'm not too awfully interested in. Um, 
I don't use messages. Again, this is well, you know, dependent on if you're in the ecosystem itself. Messages, I took it off of my taskbar down here. I don't even use it. So it, it all depends on what you do. And you can send and receive text messages on a Mac. Now that's something that would be cool. I just haven't gotten around to setting it up. Half the time, more than half the time, I'm on Linux. Um, lately I've been using Windows 10 a lot because I want to experiment and continue my learning curve on Windows 10. So I'm not exclusive to one environment or the other. So that probably would not be that useful for me. Event recognition in Photos. I'm glad to see that Photos is getting updated. I, I feel like Photos is very anemic normally and in High Sierra they continue to update it even more. Let's check out system requirements. If you're running OS X El Capitan or OS X as some people like to say, you are okay with these current versions. So here we have the MacBook Pro. My 13-inch mid-2009 is okay. I'm definitely okay with the 2015. I can even do my Mac Pro early 2008, which I have. So I've got a uh, 2008 Mac Pro. I've got the older chassis design and that one also is fine but once we get into Sierra the Mac Pro actually jumps considerably to 2010 now I had a Mac Pro that was a mid 2011 I believe it was and even that one's within a year of cutoff so that's a little bit scary and I'm thinking the next major release of Mac OS is probably gonna put that 2011 right on the edge. Sorry, I'm looking at the Mac Pro there. I actually meant the MacBook Pro. I've got a MacBook Pro 2008 with the old chassis, a 2009 with the unibody chassis, and I've got the 2015. So my two oldest Macs are going to be cut off at El Capitan. And I know many of you users are going to say, Mark, don't worry about it. You can always, there's ways to do it, but it's not officially supported and it can become somewhat of a pain uh, to do upgrades but I guess if I really wanted to I could however I personally stay with the supported versions of the operating system and go from there so just to wrap up quickly what do I want optimized storage universal clipboard iCloud sync sounds really cool uh, if you have the storage available in your iCloud account Things I'm not really that keen on, Apple Watch, Auto Unlock, Apple Pay, Siri, uh, Apple Messages, updates with emoji, woohoo. I don't care about the emoji, honestly, folks. Now, let's check out the Sierra versus High Sierra. And I actually had a couple of features in here that I was thinking, you know, this is stuff I really am interested in. Now, the first one is the new Apple file system. I'm not sure on this. Maybe uh, some of you could help me out here with support, but they're saying, you know, the Apple file system is a big change for High Sierra. And they're saying it's already in iOS 10, so the APFS is going to be used in iOS now. And it, it just looks to me like they're moving towards some type of convergence even though it might not be the interface part of it that we're using in Mac OS and iOS I'm thinking that it's definitely convergence at least in the infrastructure like they're trying to close in on only having to develop one core infrastructure maybe in the future that the the Elements on the operating system in the background in both iOS and macOS might be synonymous. They might be almost identical, which would make Apple's work a lot easier. Some of the interesting features in APFS include copying files, and finally, it's much easier to find the size of files and folders. Now, this I'd like to see, and I hope that's the case because it is kind of a pain in the butt. It's To me, it's easier in Windows with right-click and then properties, but we'll see how it works out. So if I did go to, oh, let's see, let's go to my 
account here and I'll just go to Google Drive and I'll right click. I can do get info so I can see the size here. I guess it's not as bad as it could be. It does give me the size and size on disk it looks like. Nope, just the size on disk and the permission settings. So they're saying it's going to be easier to find. I'm not sure how much easier it can be, but that remains to be seen. One of the coolest things about APFS, and it doesn't look like they really talk about it too much here, but uh, it can share space across multiple partitions on a drive. So if you had one partition that was filling up, it, the APFS kind of looks at what storage space is available overall and it can make use of that free space on the other partition and the other feature which I thought was really fascinating if you were to make two copies of a large file or group of files it doesn't actually make another copy so you won't let's say you had a two gigabyte file and you copied it into a copy of the another two gigabyte file the first file is the original. Now if you make changes it will actually instead of having that second copy it's more like a placeholder so it's not using any room so it keeps a differential and I guess it does it with writing blocks of information so it keeps a differential of the changes you've made since the first original file so in that way it's supposed to save a lot more room. Now another major feature that I'm really interested in is the H.625 video standard also known as HEVC high efficiency video encoding. So if you are somebody who edits and works on videos you can encode and set up 4K video and it's supposed to be 40 percent more compressed than on Sierra. So this would be something that is a pretty significant development. If you're editing 4K video you can get much more compression using H.625. I'm not a big fan on virtual reality so I'm not going to go into that but one thing that is somewhat concerning if you have any legacy 32-bit apps there will no longer be 60 or excuse me 32 bit support in high sierra so at this point we are going all 64 bit so we're our chips are all in and if you do have 32 bit apps that you use i can't say what's going to happen i want to say they'll keep working but given the history of mac os i'm going to go with no um, i've had some older apps that of course worked fine in PowerPC for example and those apps would work fine also for Intel based processors but later on PowerPC app support was dropped in OS 10 altogether even if you were on Intel so those apps would no longer work unless you were on an older version of the Intel based OS X or OS 10 such as Mavericks or something like that so I don't think you're going to be able to use 32-bit apps once you go to High Sierra, but that does remain to be seen. I can't think of any 32-bit apps I have, and I'm pretty sure even if I did, there's many that'll be out there. I should say many that'll be out there that have a 64-bit version. The one thing that's concerning is I do have many apps that are open source. Now, I'm assuming most of these are 64-bit at this point, but... You can't assume anything, so what can you do? Well, do your research before you do an upgrade to High Sierra, or possibly uh, use a different system to do an upgrade. So I've got the older Mac, I've got an older MacBook Pro 2011 that's available to me that I could do the upgrade on and test those apps and see what happens. Safari is going to remove autoplay of videos. Boy, I tell you what, I really like that. And I believe you can also turn that feature on in Firefox. I haven't done it yet because it would be exclusive. You'd have to do it for every site. But on the other hand, I wouldn't have to watch the videos in Facebook and other sites like CNN, which drives me nuts. I don't like the autoplay of videos. 
Photos is going to get more updates. It's got a sidebar here now. So Photos is going to be a nice application finally, hopefully. <laughs> It remains to be seen. It isn't out yet, but it looks like it's going to get some nice updates. The one factor to consider, of course, is if you want to update to High Sierra, you have to have Sierra already. So I don't think you can go directly from El Capitan to High Sierra because High Sierra really is not a full OS 10, excuse me, Mac OS implementation so it's kind of a middle of the road implementation and high sierra is dependent on the updates that sierra gives you so bottom line am i going to upgrade my system to sierra when i add it all together i like the idea of the optimized storage the universal clipboard icloud sync the clipboard sync the APFS in High Sierra H625 video compression. I don't use Safari very much, but the Photos app is updated. I'm going to go with a yes. So for the MacBook Pro 2015, I'm going to say yes. I've heard from people in the past that they had problems, uh, not problems, but performance issues with older MacBook Pros. I have to say, with all the updates that I've done to my operating system, my Mac operating system on my devices, I've never had a performance issue. The MacBook Pro 2008 and the MacBook Pro 2009 work excellent with El Capitan. I really can't imagine that it's going to be a major issue with performance to do the upgrade. Um, Again, others have said it's an issue for them, but my personal experience, even with these really old machines, even with that MacBook Pro 2008, everything actually worked really well and performance was a non-issue. I was very satisfied. Now, the MacBook Pro 2008 I have and the MacBook Pro 2009, I've updated the memory to the max on both of those and I've also put in SSDs, so that may be a huge mitigating factor for performance. On a newer MacBook Pro, I'm not thinking we're gonna see very many issues. So in a coming video here, it's time to update to Mac OS Sierra. It's been out long enough now. I don't like to adopt an operating system early on so I usually let things go for a while and there have been several updates to Mac OS Sierra. So I'm gonna give it the fast gadgets check mark of definitely useful and definitely a future upgrade. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. Always give me some comments. I always love to see your comments. Like and subscribe, you, you know the usual. Uh, I always say subscribe and share. I, I really like it when you get out there and share if you found that this video was useful to you. And if you really liked it, head over to patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets and buy me a cup of coffee. I'll see you next time.